how does it feel to be part of MTM London Comic Con? <laughs> feels fantastic. Happy to be here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's great. I love it. I've been here before, so have I, you been I oh, you have? coming here. Yeah, I've oh, been okay. to yeah, I've been to this before. Okay. And so yeah. Oh, oh, I have it. I've never been here before. Yeah, oh. right. I'm very excited. Really? Oh. This con. I've been to England several million times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're kind <laughs> of from here. Yeah, I was born here. So. That's here, so surprising to me because I feel like you do you do you do Wasn't like it a lot of the next door. No. Yeah. Uh, I do, but I've never done one here. Oh, cool. We'll just stay here for the rest of. I did one in Nottingham. You know, with Robin oh, Hood. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. With <laughs> but not here. So, there we are. We're very happy to be here. We yeah, are. it's really fun. Yes. <laughs> what was it that you initially connected with, with your character, and what do you think they've contributed to the show overall? For me, it was just... Five is, like, really weird, and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> She's unique, and... So um, I just relate to her being like, I don't know, you know, she's weird and different, and um, I feel like I relate to her in that way. Um, what was the second part of the question? How, what, how has she contributed? What they brought to the show as it's gone on. Um, I don't know, what do you think Six has brought to the <laughs> show? <laughs> no, the show? I, I'm my passing <laughs> over the question. Are you really? I'm not. Um, <laughs> I for me, I, I, liked, I liked his, his, his sense of fairness and trying to do yeah. the right thing. And he had that great moral center and compass that, yeah, you might not like whatever, but you should do the right thing. And he tries to do that and live his life that way. And so I kind of like that um, about him. And I mean, what, he's, he's the voice of reason in a lot of ways. Whereas, you know, you had one that's always kind of like, no, we're always going to be heroes. And then three is always, no, we're going to do this, whatever. And he's kind of like, well, how about we do what's right? And you find the right thing to do. And yeah. you don't always agree, but you do it. And so I like that about him. I am just biting to hear what Zoe's answer to this question. <laughs> well, actually, it's funny because as I was, as you were talking, I was just thinking about the fact that I, I, I played a doctor in the last show, and she was pr- probably the most socially inept character on the show. And then I play now an android who's <laughs> literally the most socially inept character probably on the planet. But, <laughs> but I was thinking about the fact that she's, ironically, I think, the, the most emotionally available. And by that, I just mean everybody else has, is protecting themselves to some mm. degree. Like, all of the characters on the show, they give as much as they feel comfortable giving, whereas the android gives always whatever she has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. And even though that what she has is so limited, she gives of it all the time. And so I think that about that character appeals to me for some reason. Mm. Yeah. I'm like that. I'm Zoe Roger coming from Continuum of Lost Girls, two of the biggest sort of one of hits. Do you feel... Do you feel the same sort of feeling with this show? If it could be up there with Continuum and Lost Girl? Most definitely. It has the potential to be to be that. You know, we'll we'll see what happens in, you know, it's got a, not, not a season or two, and we'll see what you guys think at the end of season two. But most definitely, I think it has the potential to be up there with it. Well. I completely agree, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think season two is going to blow season one out of the water. <laughs> it's a really strong, interesting season. And Joe and Paul are no strangers to a successful series with Stargate, of course. And so... <laughs> Potential, absolutely, lots of it, yeah. So um, what I really like about the character of Two is she naturally steps up and she naturally becomes the leader of the Raza. And no one questions it based on her gender, which I really love. No one questions it because she's a female. I mean, they question it because she's nat- she kind of knows what she's doing naturally, and you're like, oh yeah, you obviously did it because you know what you're doing. Um, but no one questions based on the gender. And she's a really great role model because she can go and she knows what she's doing. There's a really great foundation called Gina Davis, and their um, kind of catchphrase is, if she can see it, she can be it. And little mm-hmm. girls can see um, two stepping up and being in control and no one questioning her, and they can think, I can do that too, I can take control, and I know what I'm doing. So I just think that's a really great thing about two. What is your name? Presley. Hi, Presley. <laughs> Hello. It's very nice to meet you. <laughs> well said. Thanks. Very well, well said. said. Here, here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm. I'm. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great observation. I'm glad you pick up on that, and it seems like you're sharing it too. That's really great. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Lovely. Well, I guess just picking up on that observation, um, particularly when you're working in a genre like sci-fi, is that particular dimension of the show something that, I guess, as actresses, you're especially mindful of when you're reading scripts and when you're approaching a project? Uh, what exactly? What aspect? Well, I guess, I mean, the strength of female characters and the way in which they're presented as equals and it's not, uh, they're not marginalized in the, in the way that sometimes the allegation is the sci-fi genre has a habit, a bad habit of doing. Um, I, I don't want to 
Mm, I won't. I know that I know that the team behind Dark Matter is really trying to move away from qualifying characters and their strength by their gender and saying that that sets them apart, that sets their strength apart and makes it extra special because of their gender. And in fact, it's just another strong character that's stepping up to the plate and is the best option for that role. Um, and by role, I mean uh, the position in the ship, in the context of the story. Um, like Six, Two is also... Uh, level-headed for the most part unless she's put in a do or die type of situation mm -hmm. and they're kind of the par parental figures um and together they figure out what's the best move at but, all but times it, but i like what you're saying there it's, it's kind of like what what would be, what is great or what will be great going forward is <clears throat> once again not worrying about the color or the yeah. gender or anything like that it's kind of like the best person they do. They'll get to do the job, and you can forget about all those other questions. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice for us to get to that point in society, as well as no kidding, you know, television and sci-fi genre, where you can get past it. And the captain doesn't always have to be a forty-year-old middle-aged Caucasian gentleman <laughs> and things like that, and just be. That said, I do appreciate that. Yeah. I think on our show we've not um, sexualized the 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 main female characters on our show not that that's not a part of everyday life because it is but i do think that the market in that genre especially on the television yeah ever. it's not exactly in there, as, as mm -hmm. because that's real <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. but we're not first. they have more substance yeah. than that it's not just about that not but not yeah. that sexuality is not substance either it's like that is a part of human oh, yeah. nature but we're not heavily featuring it in a way that sensationalizes it and makes it something that is the focal point and and the main thing that she brings to the table which circling back i think is important for us to see representations of on television so that you know, young women can see that that's not the only thing that we need to bring to the table in order to be seen and heard and matter. Yeah, and matter. Do you feel like most of television has moved on, but the questions persist? Hmm? But what moved on from what? From from uh, marginalizing or or uh, oh. typing, uh, I guess, stereotyping characters according to gender. We'll, we'll, we'll always face, there's up. there's always some of that, you of know, course, if you look yeah. at it. But if you look at television right now, it's a great time to be a female, lead female. Yeah. So yep. many lead females on there kicking butt mm -hmm. and doing their thing. So it, it, I think it's most definitely grown in that way and moved on. Color thing we still got to work on. But <laughs> you don't want to get into that that bigger issue there. But um, yeah, yeah, definitely. We've definitely come a long way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a, I guess worry that with lead female characters that they will just be portrayed as one of the guys and that females can't showcase their femininity as well as be a kick-ass character. Mm. That's really interesting you bring that up because I think that that comes back to uh, a, a writer's room um, and I think that it's important to illustrate an entire picture of a woman um, and that's hard to do. I mean, I think on our show we have a good representation, especially of the, all of the different ways that femininity can be expressed. You know, we have a young woman on the show, and we have a woman on the show, and we've also got an android who is like a female, and she's feminine in her own way. Like, she's got her own thing going on, and we explore, I can't say a lot about it, but we explore that in season two as well. Um, and we've also got featured characters that come in and... and like three's three's uh, wife, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she's she's she's, yeah. she's a beautiful representation of a strong woman who's also very, if we have to use that stereotype of feminine, you know, um, because I think that's also challenging that as well. You know, what is yeah. what is the stereotype of feminine? <laughs> but, but and also, does that have to be? You have to have diversity because not everyone's the same. And some women are softer, some men are softer, some are I, harder. You just, you, exactly. I was literally just you know saying, I mean? you know, yeah. as much work as we're as doing much... on trying to show a full three-dimensional yeah. woman, um, mm -hmm. you know, we have work to do on showing a three full-dimensional man. And, yeah. and yeah. all of, you know, we have as many stereotypes about what it is to be a man yeah. as we do of what it is to be a woman, what it is mm -hmm. to be a black person, what it is to be an Asian person. Like yeah. We, gay, we all, all have things. what that looks like, what we imagine that to look like. And so, you know, hopefully... 
as much work as we're doing on on the idea of a female, I, I hope that we're we're just blowing down the assumptions of what it is to really be any kind of a person. To be yeah, human. no kidding. Because so being human again. You know, it's a different show. <laughs> yeah. So dark matter um, plays around with the idea <clears throat> that people are naturally good and they naturally do good things, but then certain experiences will turn them bad and make them do bad things and do things that aren't naturally right. So your characters did bad things and they did all sorts of really bad things, but then they got amnesia <laughs> and they forgot all of those experiences that, that turned them into bad people. And now they're back to doing good people and trying to do the right thing. But now as they slowly get back some more of their memories, some of them start trying to do bad things again. Do you believe the same thing? Do you think that people are naturally good? And do you take that in consideration when you are acting these characters? Uh, if uh, not everyone. I, well, no, no, I think that everybody's yeah. doing what they feel is right for them in mm. that moment. And whether or not that's good or bad is obviously uh, based on the lens, whoever's looking at that, right? Um, but I think a lot of people, for the most part, that's, I think that's the fun. It's like the greatest exercise in empathy is to get into the shoes of whoever this bad person is or whoever this good person is and trying to make whatever decision that they're making in that moment be completely rational. This is the right choice to make in this exact moment. And it doesn't matter if I'm good or bad. That's none of my business. Is this, is this what I need to do right now? Because what do I want? Yeah. What do I want? Yeah, but what I think I that need. bigger question yeah. you're asking about, do, I, do you inherently think people are inherently good people? I think there are a lot of people who try to do the right thing. And as you say, as you go along, you get jaded by events in society or people mm -hmm. betraying you or different things that happen to you along the way. And But no, there are some people that, let's be honest, are born not so good <laughs> and they do bad things. But for the um, generally speaking, yes, I think people will try to do the right thing if it's convenient for some. <laughs> it's, it's the Unless case. they go through stuff that makes them yeah. feel like a good thing is different. And it's bad. Yeah. So what moments in your careers would you never want to forget? In our careers? Uh, <laughs> All of it. <laughs> I mean, there's. No, I don't really want to forget any of it. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah. um, I have a good one. <laughs> the other day, uh, my agent said that he was trying to find out from a person, uh, a casting director, you know, when are you going to have Melissa reoccur on this next season? And he was telling me this story, and he was just like, and uh, the casting director said, I'm sorry. Who are you talking about? <laughs> and I think that I told my I told my agent like please don't ever keep stories like that away from me. Like I always want to hear about shit like that because I think it's important to have humility and to remember that like yeah sure you, some people know you in one realm but really the world is so big and you're an ant and it's important to remember that. So I, I hope to have many more experiences like that. It keeps me humble. <laughs> that happened to me one time when it's I called so the Dark good. Matter office. It was like, sorry, I'm sorry, what you? was your name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 play, I play a part okay. on your show. <laughs> Just trying to find out when I have to come to work. <laughs> anyway, yeah. What are you guys up to now then over the next few months? Oh, um, we just finished shooting. Yeah. So, you know, Don't know people yet. People flew home and, you know, yeah. reconnected with their families and friends yeah. and... You know, I don't know. More conventions coming up yeah. for some of us. Yeah, um, work, cons, life. Auditions yeah. and nothing and I, lined and I up did, yet. I did, did something fun that I can't tell you about, but <laughs> then we did that. Well. Thanks for sharing. What yes. can we tell you guys about season two? Well, first of all, we air July 1st. Yeah. July 1st. July 4th over here in July the UK. 4th. Is it July 4th over July here? 4th okay. Good to know. Good to know. July 1st or <laughs> July 4th. It's one of those four days. Please look uh, look for it. TV every day for four days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what can we tell them? We start off in Galactic Prison. and uh, It gets darker. It's definitely darker. It's a very for dark everybody. season. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more happening. I mean, you know, we were establishing so much in season one just by the nature of the show and mm -hmm. the characters and the fact that they had amnesia and trying to figure out who they were and all of that stuff. And, and now we're off and running. Yeah. yeah. Like it really has it's kind of stuff. like now we have established mm -hmm. the world and now here we are all here living we're in go it. For it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we do a lot more uh, uh, adventures splitting off from each other. I think we a lot. We have a lot of adventures mm -hmm. this season. Yeah. Last yeah. year, last year we were doing a lot of uh, base, uh, ship-based 
um, yeah. ensemble pieces. And, and this year we're really branching off and going off onto our own adventures. Sometimes it felt like we didn't even work together. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm like, where are you? How have you been? I wouldn't see you for ages. I know. Yeah. I'm so looking forward to seeing everything that's happening because the scripts were great. And, really dynamic. Uh, and, uh-huh. and, uh, they really Exciting, gave. fast-paced. Yeah. A lot of action and drama. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And where are you guys ultimately hoping the show runs to? I mean, you're talking about you know where it's heading, and it's it's as dark as this season. Is that a trend you'd like to see continue if we get a fourth more series? I think there's a bit of a balance. Yeah, yeah. A balance. I like the darkness in this in this upcoming season. I like, I like what it, we explore. but sometimes shows yeah. go so dark so fast yeah, yeah, that yeah, it's yeah. like it just gets depressing to watch. So I yeah. like where we're at right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to. You know, get too Lose dark too quickly. And the humor. Yeah, yeah, and the humor. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to keep it. Kind You're of so like, good at yeah. You, <laughs> you yeah. and Lemke are really great at, at keeping <laughs> yeah, that in in a very it's so important though, you know, because way. in the yeah. moments that are you know heart wrenching or or just really sort of um, uh, thriller esque, then you can have the levity. The which best. Yeah. Every now Some and of the funniest you, moments. Yeah, you that's all. Dead, they do a good job of that. that. Mm. Okay, to bring it back to a little bit on the happier side of things. Um, Andrew, do you pick up the script and be like, oh, why are they picking on me again? Why are they killing off the Andrew over and over again? Please. I get tased a lot. I seem to tased. be able to take anyone down with one foul swoop, but if I'm not looking, that yeah, taser. I, know. Uh-huh. I know I get tased a lot. I'm more, I'm more worried about what I have to say on a weekly basis yeah. as opposed to whether or not I'm going to get tased. Because if I get tased, I just get to lie on the ground and not say anything. Yeah, she yeah, has, as you may notice, she has she a mouthful. My she, lines are something else. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We don't envy her. <laughs> yeah. So that's tough. That's probably the hardest part of my job sometimes is just figuring out how I'm going to memorize the words I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, mine is not, my lines are not nearly as difficult to memorize as yours are, but I still don't know what they mean. Uh, when, I, when I, you know, when Five goes off on her little techie rants, I've got no clue what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but I, you say I do with my best. Yeah. <laughs> Go. I probably shouldn't tell people that I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, just. I feel like it's convincing <laughs> enough it. if I don't let them know, but uh, it's out there now. So. 